Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, today I'm going to be messing around with my uh, 1999 Escort ZX2. Uh, this uh, vehicle's got full HID. I've got a high-low kit on the uh, headlights and uh, fog lights down there have got uh, HID kit on them as well. And uh, what's basically been happening is my fog lights will not come on. So I uh, figured I'd get into like doing some HID diagnosis and uh, also I'm pretty much going to do what I did to the Lincoln. Um, this vehicle is kind of the same way like when you're driving at night and you got your headlights on and you got the fog lights on, if you hit the high beams, turn the high beams on, you lose your fog lights. So I want to kind of eliminate that, basically put the fog lights on their own separate circuit. Same thing like with the Lincoln, I'll probably wire it up so it's key on hot so I could literally just turn them on without any lights being on if I want to and also that way uh, if I am running my low beams and I turn on the high beams I won't lose the fog lights so uh, take you over and show you what I got for this alright so just like with the Lincoln I've got a DDM tuning wiring harness uh, some test leads over here for the diagnosis the switch some 18 gauge wire, some uh, female terminals, and uh, the ADA circuit. I'll show you this switch. So what I like about this switch is it's this backside is really small. So basically, all you really got to do is drill a hole that's going to fit this stuff through there. And the other thing that's nice is it's got like a little collar on it, so. I don't know, to me this mounts a little more of a solid fashion than uh, kind of switch where you would just drill a hole and pop it in. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Worked out good on the Lincoln, so I figured I'd use them on this one too. Alright, so there's a couple different ways you can go through trying to figure out what exactly is going wrong with the HIDs not coming on. So you got to figure, like, what all is involved in the circuit for these fog lights. You, know, you have to take into consideration you got the switch that activates them. That switch is on a relay. You could have a bad relay. The fog lights are fused as well. So just to check that. And uh, beyond all that, just getting into like figuring out like what really goes wrong with an HID kit, you know. Is it a bad ballast? Do you have a bad bulb? Maybe it's reverse polarity, you know, you plug something in backwards. But I mean, in my case, everything was working and then just stopped working. And it kind of went back and forth. Like first the, the driver's side would not come on and the passenger side would. And then the driver's side would come on, the passenger side wouldn't. And then now I just got nothing. So I'm going to have to dive into this. Like basically, I've got some test leads. I've got a bell so that I know works. One of the benefits of just having a bunch of HID stuff laying around. You can at least use it to help me diagnose. And got a test light. And basically you can either use jumper cables or I might just actually use this battery. Be a little bit easier. So basically what I'm gonna do is before like getting into anything, like checking the circuits in the car and all that, I'm gonna just kind of jump with this good ballast, I'm going to hook this good ballast up to each one of the bulbs and see if it fires or not. And that way uh, I kind of take that out of the equation figure out what's going on. Alright, so I'm ready to test this bulb. I've got the test leads on the ballast. Make sure you got the polarity right, you know, negative and positive on the correct sides. Got it plugged into the bulb. I put the positive test lead onto the battery. And now all I have to do is snap this on. Actually, I'm just going to hold it on there and we'll see if it fires this bulb or not. Alright, so we know this bulb is good. So basically, I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. And now, these jumper cables, like, you could pretty much do the same thing. Like, I could connect the, the jumper cables onto the battery that's in the car. You know, run the run the leads down here 
obviously being careful not to touch them to each other. And then uh, you can just, same thing, touch the leads to them. So, like I said, I mean, I'm just using the battery because whatever, it's easier right now. But if you didn't have access to a spare battery, which I'm guessing most people don't, just grab your jumper cables and use them to help you diagnose this. The other thing too, if you have a test light and you're trying to diagnose something, a lot of times it's a lot easier to just get a direct contact on the negative lead of that battery and then run the cable out to your test light. That way you know you, you've got a really good ground for using your test light too. All right, so here I am on the uh, passenger side of the vehicle. Same thing, got the ballast set up, got the test leads ready to go. So let's try this side and see what happens. All right, this side works too. It's being a little finicky, but it fired eventually. So right now we can deduce that both of the bulbs are good. So the next step's gonna be, I'm gonna plug both of these lights back into their perspective ballast, and then I'm gonna jump the ballast that are actually on the car. So we can figure out, uh, you know, we know the bulbs are good, so obviously there's gotta be some something going wrong with either the ballast or maybe both of them will work and it's just a wiring situation in the car you know bad relay or that switch has gone bad so let's check out these ballasts next all right so here's what i'm doing to check the ballast i've got this old harness i actually got quite a few of them so i've got one on there already it's on the ballast i don't know if you can see it So that's hooked up to the ballast. It's coming down here. Got the test leads on it. Basically same deal. Got the positive on ready to go. So see if this thing fires up. And it does. Alright, so we know we got a good bulb and ballast on the passenger side. So now I gotta move this harness over and do the driver's side. Alright, so same deal. I'm on the driver's side this harness plugged into the ballast so let's see if this one fires up or not all right so looks like we got a bad ballast it's not firing up so <clears throat> there you go this way you're like we're basically taking all of the the wiring in the car out of the equation so I know I got two good bulbs and I know the ballast on the passenger side is good and it looks like the ballast on this driver's side needs to be replaced so I'll probably use one of these other ballasts I got swap off actually I got a couple of older ballasts so I'm probably just gonna swap the other ballast I got on there and I'm gonna run this harness and see if I can set this up just like uh, I did in the Lincoln video alright so I got the harness just kind of thrown in here. Um, I got the hot side and the ground side of the harness jumped onto the battery on the car. And then the part of the harness I'm going to use off the switch, kind of extended it out with another harness and I'm going to jump it off this battery to see if everything's working. You just want to want to double check all this stuff before you get too crazy, you know, putting everything together. So basically these jumper leads are going to activate the relay on that harness. And the other leads I've got up here are going to power the ballast. So when I connect this to the battery, I should get everything should come on. See what happens. <clears throat> all right, cool. So Definitely had a bad ballast, and everything's working good now with this harness. So I can just, I know everything's cool now, I can just finish up mounting this harness and then I gotta, you know, run the, the switch and the wiring for that. 
All right, got this pretty much finished up. Go through what went into this. Got the ballast around there. They're tied into the new harness. Don't forget too, like you're gonna have your factory wiring for the fog lamps, which uh, is what used to activate the ballast, but that's not needed anymore. Since you got the wiring harness on there, so make sure you uh, wrap up those connections with electrical tape and just like this, this is the, uh, you know, the harness has two plugs to activate that you can choose from. So this is the side I'm not using, so I just put electrical tape on it and got it out of the way. So up here, this is what's actually going to activate the harness off of the switch. Just grounded it right here, which is where um, my high-low kit's grounded here as well. So just tapped into that. And this is uh, power coming from the switch. So I just ran a wire for the switch. Kind of followed along here. It's going back this way. So I came through, popped this panel back, kind of sneak, just kind of sneak the wire through here. So that's where I got the switch right here. And uh, just like I did on the Lincoln, this is getting power uh, from the fuse panel. And I actually, my add a circuit is a mini and these are not. So basically what I did is I just um, put a male connector on there and pushed it in, which is kind of temporary. I'm going to go get a, a real add a circuit that fits this standard size and put that on there so it's fused. But for now, it gets the job done. So <clears throat> just like with the Lincoln, you know, you've got, you got power coming to this switch from the fuse panel. This switch is also grounded. I found a factory ground up in here. And uh, then you've got the supply, which is going to that. It's going to energize that harness. And then, uh, you know, here's the relay for the harness, the fuse for the harness, right there. You got to tap it in, positive and negative on the battery. So yeah, it's not really that difficult, just like anything with wiring is time consuming. You know, make sure you use zip ties and kind of, you know, try to keep it as neat as possible. So you don't have wires flopping all over the place. So yeah, let me show you the finished product. Alright, let me hop in there and turn the key on. All right, so with the key on, I got the fog lights, and now I'll be able to operate my high beams and not lose the fog lights. So there's low beams. And like I was saying, when you click it to the high beams, you don't lose your fog lights.